All right, so let's get started now. Let's start again. <laughs> I think I'm just laughing at myself. All right, so happy Halloween, everyone. Let's get started. Let's let's see what this week looks like for Ethereum and Bitcoin. Just to start off, they both look like in a great position for continuation to the upside. There are some red flags, some technical red flags that I will mention. Um, and there are also some uh, DXY um, signals that I would like to show you as well. Um, and the DXY signals on the daily are sort of going hand in hand with my red flags on the daily for Ethereum and Bitcoin. Um, now, I'm going to start with the DXY on the daily. Um, the, the, the stochastic has turned up and the RSI is turned up as well, preparing to cross the midline on the daily. For the DXY, um, this, is, uh, 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 this, is, this is to be expected because it's hit a low. It's hit the, uh, the channel that it broke out of, the resistance line here. And it looks like it's uh, it's about to make a move to the midline. Now I always say the say this to you: when it hits the middle, the bottom of the Bollinger, the next target is the midline. It generally bounces off it. The big question here is uh, what's going to happen after it hits the midline? Will it continue upwards, or is it going to bounce down from it, the way it did here, or the way it did here? So what's what's going to happen when it does that? Um, so, looking at the, looking at the DXY, we can see that. Uh, let me see. Who's in. Hi, JD. Hey, what's going on? Good, good. I just started the, the <laughs> review. I was recording it anyway, so I'll start again because I was just a minute into it. Okay, so I was gonna I was gonna have a look at the DXY on the daily because the DXY on the daily is a big red flag to me in terms of the lift, how sustainable the lift that Ethereum and Bitcoin um, are doing now is. So we have the uh, uh, we have a crossing on the stochastic on the DXY here. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a massive lift, uh, but it does mean that the likely target is this midline. Um, once it bounces down to the bottom of the Bollinger, the next move is facing this resistance of the midline of the Bollinger. So the DXY is likely to go up today slash tomorrow. That's what it seems to me. Now, there is, a, there is some contradictory technical info at the moment uh, coming from the 4-hour. Now, the 4-hour has reached a top. Now, it can stay at the top for quite a while, like if we have a look here, uh, compared to this period here and this one here, it can still continue upwards. The four hour um, looks set on um, continuing upwards, but it hasn't yet broken the Bollinger. So that that's what it has to do to move upwards. With that information on the daily and the four hourly on the DXY, um, the way I would the way I would interpret it is we might see a drop, uh, a, a lift up today in the DXY, which would coincide with a drop for crypto. Uh, and by a drop, I mean a short term drop, a retracement or a correction or a back test, and then a continuation to, to the upside, um, which would be um, a, a drop for the DXY. Um, just that's how I would interpret what's happening right now with the way the DXY is holding this support line, which is this channel starting in um, March 2021. So we we are holding this line. I slightly I slightly tweaked it earlier on because uh, I had it a bit like this, but then I said no. The recent the recent price action needs to be included. Um, so I I decided to slightly tilt it a little bit higher. So here it is. Um, again, it's 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 quite hard to read what's happening now, and you will see on the daily charts of Ethereum and Bitcoin uh, where the major, um, how can I say, points of resistance are because there is some resistance in this lift. As healthy as it looks, as healthy as the support that it's holding looks like, um, the, the it's meeting some resistance. 
And I believe that resistance is also coming from what's going on macro level and what's what's happening with the DXY. So um, just to summarize it, we might see a lift today, tomorrow um, of the DXY, which would coincide with the short term correction for crypto. And then if the um, if, if the DXY breaks this, so if the DXY uh, after this lift starts coming down and break this, we might see a nice break for Ethereum and Bitcoin. We need to see that in the DXY uh, in order for um, proper volume and proper volume to kick in for Ethereum and Bitcoin. If the macro doesn't back up the movement, um, it's, it's not going to go anywhere. It's just going to fail at the current resistance levels. It's, uh, it, and it is quite hard to uh, trade at the moment because of the choppiness. Um, I will show it. Uh, I will do, we'll do our trade setups this week because I believe we have levels to look at. So, um, and, and the ranges are quite nice to trade. Uh, and again, I'll tell you how I'm trading this and um, I'll show you the, the strategy that I use. And if it suits your risk management um, strategy as well, um, you 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 might want to follow it. Now, going into the daily charts of Ethereum, I'm looking at the daily and I can see the 20 and the 55 EMAs have crossed up and that is generally a beautiful signal. So um, I'm, I'll show it to you back tested. So here's when it happened and we had from, from the crossing to the top A, 22, 23% lift. Um, sorry, no, I didn't measure it correctly because I, I want to take it from where it happened right here. So the price action, 16%. So nice and juicy. I'm going to take it from where it happened here as well. So 16% would be, uh, would be, would be 17%. 17.41%, so 17.60, which is not accidentally the, the, the level for this W formation. So we were looking at this W formation the other day. The technical target is 16.30, but the edge of the W, which is generally where the, if you're, this, this would be the Forex target, and Forex tends to be a little bit more conservative in terms of targets, but the, in crypto, we go back to the edge of it. Most of the times, we go back to the edge of it. So this was the bottom formation. The W came back to the edge of it, and I can show you multiple, there we go, uh, W formation came right back up to the edge of it. So in crypto, we go to the edge of it, and if we break through resistance, we go actually higher. This turns into a higher pattern for a higher swing. A crypto is more profitable like that in terms of the targets. That's why we're, we're trading it. So um, at the moment, the way it's looking, um, it's, it's, got, it's got great support. However, and it's broken through the first line of divergence. So it's broken through this line. Let me change it to green so that you can see it, which is great. It, it back tested it, which is even better. Um, it met its technical target for the W to a T. Wonderful. This, this was a, a textbook breakout. Uh, now, what we need to see is this line here being broken. So the second line of divergence, which is coming all the way from the previous overflow area of here, So from here, we have this overflow, these, these tops here. And again, this would be a second line of confirmation of a, a reversal. Um, now, this is also a big resistance line. So you see the way the move upwards stopped here. This might happen here as well. We do have this crossing here but we did have it here as well, and then it met resistance and turned down. We had the crossing here, it met resistance, it turned down. Had the crossing here, met resistance, turned down. So you can see why um, I, am, I am in two minds about um, being too optimistic when it comes to this lift, 
because I can see the resistance that it is, um, it is about to face. Now, another red flag for me, so the first red flag is this resistance. That's why I, I basically want to have this chat with you to tell you about this resistance. This is the first, um, well, it's not a red flag. I take that back. It's an orange flag. But the red flag is here in the stochastic uh, and the RSI on the daily. They're both maxed out. Of course, they can continue going, like look what happened here with the stochastic and the daily maxed out. They just kept on going and it was a beautiful lift here. Uh, same thing happened here. So can we keep going? Yes, of course. But it's it, to me, it is, uh, it, it is something to watch out for. Like, um, again, it's nothing that we can't avoid being trapped in by uh, when we use stop losses. So the, the strategy that that I'm using to trade avoids any any traps at the moment, which is uh, what I wanted to uh, to sort out because that that was my main issue with uh, with trading. Uh, but in terms of direction, this is looking very healthy. What we need to see this doing is see again the blue line of the stochastic turn upwards and continue. It hasn't yet reached the 100, so we still have plenty of space, but I just don't uh, like seeing it turned down for the moment. Um, on, the other, on the other hand, the, the four hour, I'm gonna remove this structure because don't, we don't need it. This has already met its target. On the four hour, we have the stochastic at the bottom here turned upwards. What we what we don't have is a, a reset in the regular RSI, and what we have at the moment is a uh, you see these tops keep going up, whereas momentum keeps dropping down. So we have a bearish divergence both on the regular RSI and on the volume. So volume keeps dropping while while prices are fighting upwards. Also, what we don't have on the four hour, which I would love to see is, and I'll show you a previous swing um, and, and how that happened. I would love to see a back test of the 55 EMA. This whole lift, and it's a beautiful, it was a beautiful lift. So ever since it crossed here, it's been 33%. So this 33% lift hasn't yet back tested the 55 uh, on the four hour. And I believe that might actually do a nice, a bigger reset on the, stock, on, the, on the regular RSI. And it might keep the stochastic at the bottom, but it might actually bring the daily down a little bit further and that will be healthy. So a 55, a 55 being tested for Ethereum is great. Uh, and it would be a fantastic um, entry in terms of the formation that it makes there for a long. So again, this has happened previously um, and it should, I am expecting it to happen. Again, I'm expecting it to happen quite soon, sooner rather than later, because that will create a little bit of space on the uh, daily stochastic and also the four hour regular RSI. So it will bring it a little bit further. And speaking about um, a little bit of space, I believe the one hour stochastic needs that space. The one hour stochastic needs a reset to the bottom if we are expecting this move to make a higher high. Um, again, the 15, the, the one hour has done its tests quite consistently. It's tested the 55 here, tested the 55 here. Now what we need to see is, is this gonna make a higher high? Um, okay, so um, I'm going to go back to the daily just to summarize the main uh, trend of the week. So, wait, a terrible, um, I apologize for the, for the so, too, too much so. Um, what we have this week at the start of the week, we have a bullish momentum. We are above the 20 EMA on the daily. We are holding support on the four hour there we are holding the resistance the support and resistance line at 1500 we have back tested it so there are a lot of pros for continuation to the upside 
the 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 what I'm mindful of is this daily resistance line, this daily divergence line here that at 1700 that it might meet, it might meet and get rejected and do a retrace and a back test there. And that back test could be down to I'd, I'd say that back test could be down to the 20 on uh, 20 EMA on the daily or it could be down to the um, the 55 the 55 EMA on the four hour having said that uh, I want us to look at the levels that we have this week so our the TA that we've been looking at for the past month is holding and it's being met and it's and it's looking like uh, it's still going to be moving within that very regular Ethereum space that Ethereum loves to have. We are at the moment, um, what we need to do is see how we're going to meet this, this superior level. Now, this was the level that I had last week. Looking at the divergence line this week, the daily divergence line at 1700, I'm going to move this slightly higher to the 1700 and I will remove I will remove this line and I will bring this line slightly slightly lower. Actually, I'll bring it down to here, which is the neckline of the peak formation. If this is the head and shoulders, this is the um, this is the neckline. So that's the that's the adjustment that I that I want to make, considering the levels where we are right now. We are broke. We we have broken out of this. This was a um, I had I I had it as a channel. As a channel, as a descending channel downwards, we've broken out of it. We've back tested it, and here we are moving upwards. So right now we are in the middle of a move, and that move can be now. Ethereum loves its middle of the the space moves. What we can have today, today slash tomorrow. is if this if this lift cannot break the previous high this lift is going to come down here and back test the 55 or this level of support here so this is this is where most likely this is going to go now having taking into account what happened on uh, friday uh, sorry thursday 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 night Thursday to Friday night um, we may we may see some more spillage we may see this 55 being broken and it was like uh, R20 this level was broken for 1 2 3 4 12 hours so it was a it was really tricky what happened here because for 12 hours this kept below this level looking like it's gonna head down and and then it did a full reversal to the upside with a higher high a beautiful percentage to to trade um i yeah uh, xrp did the same thing and i just uh, i was mentally exhausted at that point because i was trying to get into into longs and those longs were 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 stop lossing me out anyways so what we might see today is a double top formation we have to see what New York does. I don't know. I don't think it's a it's a bank holiday in the states. Um, I know it's a bank holiday in Ireland. Um, so, but anyways, Mondays are Mondays. They they have bigger volume than the weekend. Anyways, so if we if we don't manage to break this or m maybe get maybe we do make a higher high. Maybe we do because again, Ethereum loves it. Uh, Peaks like higher highs continue dragging on that lift upwards. So even if we do break the higher high and we meet that line of resistance, this seventeen hundred line of resistance, uh, and we look like we're about to head down, that would be a nice uh, a nice uh, trade 
downwards because the, the, the space that Ethereum is in, even from where it is right now, it's a 7% uh, it's a seven percent move to the previous um, support and resistance. So is it worth trading? Absolutely it is. What do we need what do we need for a trade like that? We need to see, and this is where I'm, I'm using traders, uh, traders reality. We need to see um, the stochastics and the RSI's topped out, and it looks like we have them. And then I'm looking for a reversal vector. Uh, we have a reversal vector here, that this red vector. Um, and then we need to see. Um, so this would be this would be to me this will mark uh, reversal. However, uh, it's we are in between we are in between sessions right now. So I would wait for the the start of New York because generally this in between timing is uh, is when the move is not yet complete. So uh, I would be waiting to see if this is going to break the previous high or this is. Um, this is uh, if this is going to break the previous side or if this is going to get rejected and then uh, again I would be waiting for a 702 entry uh, just to just to make sure I have that one too and again I cannot stress how how cautious I am right now because um, if we're not cautious about our stop losses and if we're even though even though the stop losses right now might be keeping it they have kept me out of trades which is good they have prevented me from getting trapped. Imagine shorting here on backtest, which would be a perfectly valid short to take. We even had the RSI's going our way. We had all of that. Imagine shorting here uh, and on 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 the backtest, just to be in this in this uh, percentage of a loss, almost liquidated, nine point eight percent. So this is not this is not the time to be. Um, reckless okay so going back to going back to the levels so here I have I don't know how to I don't know how to put this on so I can I can either make it from here to here or from here to here so these are the two levels that I see a possible rejection from the previous peak or this level the 1700 which is the level of divergence what happens uh, again I would be looking for the uh, uh, this I don't I don't think that this swing is complete considering the size of the one two so uh, I'm going to put a path on just to make it a little bit clear. So this is a one, two, I believe this is the three, four, and then we're going to reach up for five. So that's that's how that's that's the way I would read it, and also that's the way I would read this nice W formation, at least up to here the eighteen hundred level. Uh, that would be my uh, my interpretation of this, my projection. So at least up to here. So uh, again, here it will be a tricky time because I would be waiting for uh, a reversal structure and it might take a couple of entries to get in, in that trade. So don't lose, don't lose hope. For instance, here, if we, we, were, we were discussing longing here and Ethereum just knocked us out with uh, a deeper corrections, if you keep at it, even if it takes three five percent stop losses this is still a nine percent lift so don't don't give up keep on watching it keep on watching it if it's part of your um if it's part of and that's especially for for jd if it's part of your sessions so this happened during the asian session um and again there's nothing wrong with for instance going in with half of your position that's part of the strategy that i wanted to mention go in it with half of your position and then when you have the one hour confirmation so here let's say you tried to get in where was it here you try to get in here and you got stop lost once twice three times third time go in with, again all of them go in with half of your position so that 15 percent is only 7.5 considering your whole position and then when you see 
price action on the one hour closing above the 20, uh, add the rest and then follow it upwards. And then if you see, for instance, here, the way um, I would have traded it, here I would have taken my profit. If I wouldn't have waited for this wick because these two cannot break the previous one and I'd be like, no, I'm taking my profit here. Even if I miss this little bit here, I'm taking my profit here because uh, I've already, um, if I'm going in, let's say here, I've, I would have already made a, a 70 or 80 percent profit. So don't give up on your entries here. Watch it because this is the kind. This is the kind of games that are being played right now. If you are super patient, so if you are, if you have the patience of a saint, which I uh, don't most of the time. That's why I'm smiling. Uh, you can wait for, you can wait for this on the one hour here. This is the higher low that it makes on the one hour. So it makes lower lows, lower lows, lower lows, and then it, it breaks, it breaks up above the 20 and comes back down and that will be the higher low. So you can wait for that higher low um, and, 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 and get on it. This one wouldn't offer you that beautiful rounded bottom structure this doesn't this this did a V shape up uh, and I know I know you would have seen it maybe in the RSI you would have seen a yes it's very subtle that's the that's the tricky part with where we are right now you see that rounded bottom there's a rounded bottom here as well but here you would have seen it in price action as well so if you're not if you're not confident get in with half of your position and add the other bit on um, add the other bit on confirmation of holding the twenty um, EMAs upwards. Why upwards? Uh, because again, this is the trend. We are above the twenty EMA now. Um, you can short, and I and I short as well in these swings. I'm shorting XRP at the moment as well. Uh, you can you can be shorting this. Uh, However, you need to be very mindful of taking your profits. For instance, here, everybody, including myself, was thinking we're going to come down and test this. This level broke, it back tested, it's going to come down. If you're shorting, please, so if you're going in very technically correct at this triple top structure and you see it coming down, please secure profits by putting your stop loss above the 20 EMA. Uh, that's uh, that that will allow you to follow this trend down and that the stop loss that you put here you move it down so that it 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 it, it gives you um, the prof the profit for that bit of the trade which is 40 percent and allows you to watch what it's gonna do of course you can watch it and close your trade here when you know you see these wicks coming down and not really breaking through to the next level but it's uh, again it's a it's a psychological um it's a psychological um, how can i say it uh it's a psychological not filter protection yeah it's a psychological safety net to have that stop loss in case it decides to um, reverse. Now, why is this happening? You might be wondering why is this why is this uncertainty happening, and why why are we having um, such a hard time reading the direction? Because we are in the breakout territory, and what happens in the breakout territory um, is connected to two things. First, we have more volume coming in. Now you can see. You can see the difference in candles. Let me, let me. There we go. So this, this is our breakout territory that we're finding hard to read because look at, look at the, look at this, look at, look at those volume candles compared to what we had here, and what we had here. And Ethereum has been very generous with its ranges. So despite, despite its, Despite its choppy sideways, Ethereum gave us beautiful ranges to trade, 8.3% up and down. Sure, it takes longer to get between those levels, but it's still giving us nice ranges. So 
right now we are seeing increased volume and we are in breakout territory. Breakout means it needs to break through resistance. How does it break through resistance? It bounces up and down. It's like a, like a, uh, a I don't know what, what the name is. Oh, you know the, the street tool that they use to break through the, the pavement, like, brrr, like a drill. So it bounces up and down, up and down. So I believe that's, in my mind, what I see price action doing. It needs to break through these levels and it's breaking through very uh, methodically but it is doing so so um, that's why right now it's harder to interpret um, because we've seen we've seen a um, we've seen an increase in volume it is very frustrating at times I, I I have to say as a trader I'm finding this very frustrating to trade especially now since I ha it wasn't so frustrating when I wasn't using stop losses but it was frustrating because I was getting trapped so now I stopped getting trapped but I, I started being stop lost out which is not nearly as painful financially as being trapped because you know I'm being stop lost for 15% out of half of my position whereas being trapped would sometimes me being in the red with 50% with you know two DCAs in so uh, financially it's it's working out but it is frustrating because I would have loved to to be in a more um, how can I say linear trend upwards but I guess um, this is this is the bear market lift energy so it's not so linear going upwards because the bears the sellers are constantly selling so that's why we have these retraces now um, so speaking about the the weekly levels I will be adjusting them day by day uh, in our morning sessions but just to just the just to see that the trades that are uh, that might be available today so watching the uh, the start of the New York session might give us a wick up to the 1700 a possible rejection a back test of the uh, previous level the 1500 and then from there from there moving up to here possibly breaking through there consolidating and then moving up to I'm gonna put it like that moving up to uh, the the 1800 level which is right about here that this peak formation so this would be a fantastic trade to follow of course we need to see our um, we need to see, we need to see our signals we need to get those three S's um, and uh, again I'm, I'm saying this to you in all honesty I am watching for my three yeses with each and every trade that I that I go in and if I happen to miss a lift like I did uh, the other day for XRP because I had been stop lost out three times and the swing that it actually reversed didn't give me my three yeses so I didn't go into that trade uh, why because I don't want to chance it at the moment it's um, it's uh, those three yeses are essential having those three yeses between the one hour and the 15 minute time frame so you don't need three yeses on the 15 minute time frame but you do need the RSI or the stochastic RSI on the one hour and the 15 minute to be in to be going the same way so at the top coming down for a short at the bottom going up for a long you need to have that confluence because otherwise it's um, it can it can it can be very messy um, and exhausting um, now let's see on the MAs for the for Ethereum uh, the 200 is down here at 1525 can this be back tested absolutely it can this is on the 12th hour let me change to the daily let's see the daily MAs um, on the daily MAs we haven't had the 10 being tested the 10 is a great one to be tested which is at 50 1500 confluence with our uh, hourly levels the 20s at 1400 um, could it go down all could it come down all the way down there absolutely it can 1400s the, the, this is the the big psychological 1370 but i can move it up to reflect the the ma's at the moment 
because this is more historically psychological. There we go. So, um, mm, 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 the MAs, let me go back to the MAs. There we go. So here, here, here they are. And here is the 200. Here's the 200 uh, MA on the daily at 1690, which is where I anticipate the rejection to happen. This is, uh, and again, if the rejection happens there, it's not a big deal as long as the back test holds. And we have great support coming from underneath with the 10 and the 20 crossing over the 50. The 50 MA has been turned into support. We can see here what happened last time it did that. But we can also see here that they crossed up. Uh, this, is a nice, this is a nice chart for you to see the back test that I'm talking about here and here. And here so you can see it loved its three peaks up um, and three back tests on the 20 we haven't had a back test yet on the 20 so we we, we have to see what's gonna happen when it gets there um, okay that's that's the that's the ethereum um, outlook um, just to put it in a nutshell um, today, I believe we might see a back test of the 1500, maybe even the 1400 level, depending on how momentum goes. Uh, the 1500 it is more likely, and I and I again, I would be playing these trades uh, step by step. So I would be taking profit at uh, at one level. Um, and I would be taking full profit and then waiting for another entry opportunity, even if that costs me a little bit of stop loss. The ranges that XRP or Ethereum have at the moment, they justify those stop losses, especially since I choose to start with half my position. So the stop losses are, um, I, I haven't even got, when I, when I was stop lost, I, it, it, it's never happened that I was with full position in. So it, I've always been with half of my position. So I've only invested half of my position stop losses so far, whereas the profit that I take is generally on a full position because I DCA on confirmation. And I do watch it. Um, in Romanian, we have a saying, uh, watch it watch it as if you're watching a gas container. <laughs> so I am watching it very closely on the 15 minute and the one hour for, um, uh, for momentum to top out in the direction of my trade. Yeah, so um, that's that's how I see it. Uh, again, uh, I would be waiting for the stars of New York to to see how it does. I don't like. I, I I either place my trades at the stars of London after the first hour, or at the stars of New York after the first hour. So I let the initial movement and momentum of the stars of the market play out before I uh, evaluate my position and I see where where we are. And I. And I do wait for those three yeses between the 15 minute and the one hour. For instance, in my uh, in my XRP short, I'll show you what my three yeses were. Um, here, here I I entered right about here at the back test of this 200 EMA. The back test of this trend line didn't quite hit it, but to me it was a big it was a big um, thing to to go towards. Um, and then there was the stock on the 15 minute and the stock on the one hour that were at the top. So to me, those three yeses were um, good enough to start a short position. I'm only half of my position in. When will I DCA? After the first move of New York. I have already a DCA put in at 46.5 in case New York decides to test the psychological low. Um, but if that DCA doesn't go in, I will DCA when the daily open gets broken. If uh, again, if momentum is holding my way, if the if if the daily is not broken at the bottom rather than at the top. Okay, so that's the uh, that's what I wanted to tell you about today about Ethereum and the trading strategy. So be mindful of uh, having your stop losses in, your three S's. And starting with half of the position again. That's I, I'm very mindful of keeping a nice clear head when when I when I trade. So that helps me. That's how my mind works. I'm 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 okay with watching a trade as long as I know I don't have all my eggs in one basket, um, and it uh, you know goes the other way around. Because it is it is very it is choppy at the moment, and that's 
again like a drill it drills through resistance levels so it's normal to have that fight and again i'm i'm trying to avoid confrontational because there's no adversarial language here but it's the buyers and the sellers so the buyers are buying they're seeing the good signals the positive signals the sellers are sellers are selling because maybe they've been holding they've been they've been buying somewhere around here and now they see their opportunity to leave the market that's what the resistance levels are it's levels where people bought in and now they're leaving the market um, okay, that that was Ethereum. That was the DXY. These were the two. I see. I see two possible trading opportunities down for today slash first half of tomorrow. Uh, maybe the Asian session and then up um, for the next level. Um, but again, I will check in with you every day in the morning because it is uncertain breakout territory. Moving on to Bitcoin, Bitcoin is like, look at the space we're in. Could we actually be moving in a smaller space? I don't think we can. I, I don't think we can. Like, look at this compression. Something is about to pop. Similarly to Ethereum, I am not a huge fan of how the daily stochastic is looking. Um, it's, lo it's heading down. We don't have that crossing of the EMAs for Bitcoin yet. Uh, they try to do it here, try to do it here. Is there another time? Uh, they crossed up here and they did this. So here we are now. It, um, what's the name? Uh, Bitcoin. <laughs> Bitcoin is uh, is closer to this divergence line. Ethereum hasn't hasn't reached it, but Bitcoin has. If we zoom in. And we see, look how clearly it's been holding this line. And this line has been here since this lift here. So for four months, August, October, three months. So for three months, this has been here. Um, so now we're testing it and something is, something is going to move. If we're looking on, uh, if we're looking at the previous support and resistance level, the twenty thousand four hundred, which I keep telling you is essential because it is the, the the W formation. It is holding it beautifully. Now it hasn't back tested. Uh, let me show you what uh, it hasn't back tested, and I think it should. There we go. Now it hasn't back tested yet. Uh, I don't the drawings. Remove the drawings. Okay, it hasn't yet back tested the twenty EMA here. That's the twenty MA here. That's moving upwards, and this would be really, really healthy for it to do so. And I'll show you what I mean by looking at the previous swing. Like if we look the same thing that Ethereum did. These oh three peaks i'm really sorry about all this drawing so these are the three peaks now i'm going to remove the drawings look at the back test here look at the back test here look at the back test here so three peaks three back tests in order to move higher we need to drill down and then lift up so i believe we will see a back test of that level um again today slash tomorrow the level would be uh, the 19 uh, 19,800, which sounds a little bit. Oh, that would be a, a big, a big drop, and more, more often, uh, more, more than that, a psychological drop for Bitcoin. It, it's not that big in percentages, but breaking the 20k is breaking through a psychological level. So I, as much as I'd love to see that 20 MA get tested, I'm not sure I'd like to see the 20k level be broken. Uh, but again, this is what it technically likes to do. So staying technically correct is a good way of um, watching to see where we're going. Now, let me remove this. Just for the trade setups uh, this week, I believe Bitcoin might do the same thing as Ethereum. Bitcoin is not as generous as Ethereum in terms of ranges. Uh, Ethereum has a bigger range to move to move in. Uh, here we are. Here we are with the two levels. There's there's the level. So where we are here, we are we're uh, uh, 
sorry, <laughs> that was my voice. I lost my voice there. Um, we're clearly meeting resistance. This is a double top structure, even a triple top structure. If I switch to the one hour, Uh, I want you to notice the uh, divergences. So here are our peaks going up <laughs> and here is momentum coming down. And momentum is coming down and volume is coming down. Similarly to Ethereum, from a technical perspective, things are dropping. Where could they move towards well the first trade that i would be looking to make would be a short down to this level seeing what this level does and then following it down to here uh, i i have to um on my let me change to the to the traders reality on my daily levels the 20100 is the m0 uh, it is at the moment above the pivot point on the one hour it looks like it's staying above the pivot point if this pivot point breaks um, we are at m3 the next level would be m1 but it's too small of a of a drop if the m1 breaks um, I'd say the M0 or even the 800 here on the one hour could be tested. And this is in line with the levels that we have here. So this is the 19,700 and this is the previous support and resistance line. Um, I actually, do you know what? I will be, I will be changing over to this chart for the, for the trade setup because now that I see it, um, I realize the targets are better followed here okay so we have we have the RSI divergence we have the volume divergence indicating momentum is coming down and a short is likely to uh, a short a drop is likely to happen so uh, this is the this is the ascending wedge it it it's moved in it doesn't have it only had one two three it doesn't it doesn't have a final touch to the top which is where the trick is like I was caught in that at the weekend on XRP because XRP did the same thing it didn't have a touch to the top here in in its wedge it is unusual but at the same time it's natural when sell volume comes in it doesn't reach the top of the structure that it's in so it is complete uh, as as much as it's um it's missing a swing before the breakout it is natural for that to happen if the sell pressure is bigger than the buy pressure um so the first the first trade i again i'm taking the midline of this of this uh, the midline the mid mid width of this and if i am to put it a breakout if this is the breakout the breakout would be quite dramatic. It would be coming all the way down to 19k. Now that would be really, really dramatic for Bitcoin, and that would be, that would mean breaking the 50, the 20 on the daily, coming all the way down to the 19k support and resistance level. And we know that Bitcoin has, and you've heard me say it a, a million times so far, it has those uh, psychological levels: the 18k, the 19k, the 20k and then 22.5 so these are the levels that it likes to go to um, our wedge here would take us down to 19k do i believe it's going to get there not with the current signals on the daily not with the current trend on the daily uh, but i will be holding this target here for further um for further um observation so the first the first uh trade that I would be looking at would be maybe during the New York session a possible lift and then a drop to the 2400 and then maybe a, a retest of the 19.7 which is the EMA so I would be looking to see um, I would be looking to see a reset of the one hour RSI so I don't anticipate this going any further without a proper reset. Like, look how many touches we've had at the top here, and no touch here to the bottom. Like, we haven't we haven't brought this back into balance, and this needs to be balanced. This this momentum needs to reset itself. 
And I think today, generally Mondays are, are famous for their fake moves. Today might be a fake, not a fake move, a corrective move. I think it's, again, it's wrong to say fakes, but a, a corrective move to the downside. And if this was, uh, if this was, let me see if I can... Now there's it's a it's very hard to read this as an impulse wave, uh, but it we could one, two, three, four. Four doesn't break the one, so look how close. And then we had a tiny five here, so this could be a uh, this could be a one two three four five. And if this were a one two three four five, and if we put a fib on it. Uh, Bitcoin likes its 702, 786 as well, um, but also likes to stop somewhere in the middle depending on momentum. So the 05 would be 19.4. The golden pocket would be the 19, 19K where the target of the wedge would take us. And again, I've taken the, the mid width of the, of, the, of the wedge, a 702 or a 786 or a possible backtest of this, of this structure that it came out of. I'll show you on the four hour how beautiful this structure that it broke out of is. Like look at this, look at this beautiful triangle, which is the previous arc. A back test to here would be completely uh, possible. Like we've seen, we've seen this happen. So um, again, you may you you may you may want to trade this um, and take profit step by step, or you might want to. Uh, DCA in step by step. So um, it's 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 up to you whether you want to. I told you on um, on on Thursday the two possible ways. This would be a long, this would be a nice uh, corrective short position, and it would be down to here. It would be nine percent. Down to here would be four percent. So, however you want to trade this step by step or one one big um, one big short securing profit with your with your stop loss because you don't want a reversal at the zero five or the golden pocket without securing profit um okay so that's 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 the first trade uh, and then i do see continuation to the upside um i after the one hour rsi and stochastic rsi's reset at the bottom I believe that will create a little bit more space in the daily uh, stochastic as well to be reset to the bottom and then come up because on the daily RSI we have the opposite structure, um, the opposite um, phenomenon so to say. Look how many touches we have here at the bottom and we haven't yet had a blow off top, we haven't yet had that um, leveling out of momentum to the upside as well. And we know that that's needed and that happens. So uh, I believe that the contradiction in where we are right now is due to the shorter time frames, the one hour, the one hour doing its back tests and its resets, and then the daily continuing its uptrend. After we have this, It's harder. Sorry, uh, just ju just as um, just a difference between Ethereum and Bitcoin. It's harder to anticipate where this correction is going to stop for Bitcoin because Bitcoin has had a lot more intermediary levels than Ethereum. Ethereum is clearer in its uh, space. Like it's it's this level, this level, this level, three levels happy days. Bitcoin has had more than that. I, I removed the lines because I wanted to keep my, my charts clear, but you can see that there's there's the 18.6 level here, then there's the 19, there's the 19 level here, then we have the 20k level here, then we have the uh, 21 level, and so on. So it's been very, very choppy for Bitcoin uh, in this consolidation. However, uh, the signals are signals, the yeses are yeses. It depends on you how you want to, 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 to trade this. Um, if, you're if you're managing your risk, you could be trading this uh, up and down while it's 
doing its breakout move. Um, I would be looking if you want to stay on the safe side and the more probable uh, trade you have to keep in mind that the trend is up as long as that 20 EMA on the daily doesn't break the trend is up and if you want to sit back and do a more um, how can I say a more uh, a calm not a calmer a more relaxed trade would be waiting for it to bottom out on the one hour and the 15 minute especially the stochastics are the ones that I'm watching right now because they're the ones tracing immediate um, immediate um, movement so if you want to sit this short position out you can do so and wait for the bottoming out of this move and then go in on the lift and yes the lift might be uh, might be tough to get in on like look at what happened here we had one two three four so you can you can you can wait for the one hour structure up and down put a 702 and then you would for instance here you would be uh, stop lost out here uh, stop lost out here 12 two stop losses uh, then you wait for here here three stop losses so he, this is such a tricky one to catch because it involves three stop losses but after the third one if you keep at it here it is going up and never looking back so if you start with half of your position and then dca on confirmation of this line you you and these stop losses are tiny like if you're putting a 702 it's below the the, the 0 0.5 let's say six percent Three stop losses, six percent. It's eighteen percent. You're half of the position in nine percent, and then you DCA in here, and you have this. And if you put a seven o two to here, this would be a. I'm only showing this to you because it is a game of numbers, so that you don't get, uh, how can I say, disheartened at the uh, at the stop losses, because that's what it does. These are the kind of these are the kind of uh, tr not not tricks. These are the kind of corrective movements that it does so it would be four percent uh four percent to follow up to the next support and resistance level and here again i would be very stingy with my profits i if i were to see this this hour not closing above i would be taking my profit here yes it wicks a little bit higher um but I'm okay with taking my profit here and it would be a 4.7 and if you DCA in here let's say you don't get the 4.7 you get the 30% you put 9% uh, in get 30% out you're still in profit 20% and that's only because of the stingy um, range Bitcoin is moving in so that's all that the trades offering really but you would still be making profit and keeping your capital safe and also keeping your mind and your head in the game which is very important for you to know how to trade breakouts in the future so um that's the that's that's the um that's the the analysis and the outlook uh, in short we might see a corrective move today slash tomorrow and then a continuation to the upside the big the big when for this move not if because it is very likely to hold the big when for this is to hold the 20 EMA the 20 EMA or the 20 MA on the daily for both Bitcoin and Ethereum if they hold on back test happy days we're moving on and you can play this um, you can play this in two ways you can trade the correction down or you can wait for it to bottom out and then go in on the long and yes that long might be a little bit tricky because we've seen lower lows being uh, made but if you start with half of your position and you put tight stop losses uh, you're you're gonna be risking the minimum that you can risk and risks are inevitable in trading and I see them as investments it's again it's my way of paying the market for giving me my gains later that's it from me. Have a great day trading and a great week trading. And I'll post these setups. Uh, I'll only post the shorts for the moment. 
because I uh, for Bitcoin for Ethereum I have the levels for the longs as well but we still need to see day by day where it's meeting resistance and what the oscillators are doing the RSI's are doing because they're the ones tracking momentum thank you guys and happy Halloween